Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, the Battleship staff has invited aboard Battleship North Carolina in Wilmington, North Carolina. Battleship North Carolina is still in her World War II configuration and as such has some interesting features that Iowa-class battleships like New Jersey would have had, but no longer do. So today we're going to be looking at the ship's searchlights and practice loading machines. But before that, our trip to North Carolina was sponsored by Rustic & Maine. Rustic & Maine is a North Carolina-based company that makes rings out of reclaimed wood. Mine is made out of teak from Battleship New Jersey, but they also have models that are made out of teak from Battleship North Carolina. Check the link in the description below for more information on them. Don't just get a traditional ring when you could have a ring that tells a story. North Carolina has some big 36-inch search lamps. Big old carbon arc lamps. Uh, she was designed with six of them. And Iowa-class battleships originally were built with five of them. So what are they for? Well, that one's pretty easy. You need to light stuff up at night. These aren't really signal lamps like the 12-inch search signal lamps that uh, we still have on New Jersey where you can send blinking messages. Uh, although these may have an iris in them, that iris probably isn't for blinking light messages as much as it is to send a focused beam of light as opposed to a wide beam of light. These battleships were designed before radar was incorporated into ships. So if you ran into enemy ships in the dark, the only way to see where they were is wait for them to shoot at you and see their shell splashes and uh, the fire from their guns, or illuminate them first. Now, uh, everybody could guess, as soon as you turn on that searchlight, not only do you know where the enemy is, but they know where you are. So, uh, you'll notice there is no shell plating or splinter protection around the searchlight. That's because it's remote controlled. There wouldn't have to be a sailor up here. Uh, it can be controlled from down below inside the more armored part of the ship and uh, turned on from down there and rotated from down there to point at targets. And uh, like I said, Battleship New Jersey was built with five of these. There were uh, two on the forward superstructure by the forward funnel, and there was one at the very forward end of the superstructure, uh, just forward of the Mark 37 director for the five inch guns, Sky One. Um, and the other two were near the aft funnel on platforms. If you come on board New Jersey and you're walking around our 05 level as you go from the uh, phalanx that's up there around to where the Surbach launchers are, you'll see a round weld mark in the deck, which is where one of these lights were. Before the end of World War II, the forward searchlight had already been removed. Shortly after the end of the war, the other lights were also removed because radar meant you didn't have to expose your position by lighting everything up. Uh, and even so, searchlights weren't the greatest thing in the world because remember, we also have star shells. And you can fire a star shell to explode behind an enemy target so it illuminates them for you, but it does not illuminate you. And that uh, star shell will suspend from a parachute and stay airborne for a period of time so that you can see that enemy target. Now that we've had something of a segue, let's go look at the practice loading machines for the five inch gun. Loading a five inch gun was largely a measure of rhythm. The US Navy preferred uh, hand-loaded to automatic loaded guns because uh, you can achieve a higher rate of fire hand-loading, believe it or not, if you got the rhythm down. So a well-trained gun crew was expected to fire these guns one round every four seconds, or about 15 rounds a minute. But during kamikaze attacks, ships like North Carolina could uh, fire as many as 22 rounds per minute per barrel at enemy aircraft. Those guys were really well trained and practiced. Now, obviously, you can't fire these guns day and night in practice. You're wasting a lot of ammunition. You're wearing out the rifling of your barrel. So what did they do? On Iowa-class battleships, there was a practice loading machine between the after funnel and the after main battery fire control director tower. On North Carolina-class battleships, the 5-inch practice loading machine sits right here. 
it's open so that when you start training, you've got a little bit of room to move around, unlike when you're in the armored gun house for a five inch gun. But uh, I've seen pictures where they trace out on the deck the barriers of the gun shield and the various things that are in the way. And so this way, a gun crew can sit around there and they can take 22 pound wooden dummy powder training cartridges and these uh, brass shells that weigh about 54 pounds and don't have a rifled, uh, rifling base ring on them. And they can practice setting them in the loading machine. And this thing can be elevated to different angles so they can practice at different loading angles. And the, the various positions in there can practice passing the ammunition, getting it out of the hoist, and so on and so forth. When, when you fire star shells, you don't just fire one, you fire a couple in a series so that you're lighting up the entire horizon in front of you. And so you've got to be able to load these uh, pretty rapidly to get them out there. And then usually by the time you finish firing a salvo, they've started to come back down to earth and you've got to fire another one. So uh, even though this was primarily used to practice for anti-aircraft uh, and at lower angles you can practice for anti-ship, it also helped with the rhythm for firing star shells. There's also a practice loading machine for the Quad 40s. And North Carolina has half of theirs. There should be a, another mount like this right here so that uh, the gun crew could stand around. And basically, you're just practicing dropping clips in. While I've seen practice ammunition for the five inch guns, and we've got several rounds in our collection, I've never seen practice ammunition for the Quad 40. So I don't know if they were just using regular ammunition or uh, if, if there is a practice round out there. And again, I can tell you exactly where on the Iowa class battleships our practice loading machine was. And uh, it seems to have been there up until at least the Vietnam War, but it was definitely removed by the 80s. Uh, however, I'm not sure that Iowa class battleships had a practice loading machine for their 40 millimeters or not. I've never seen them in pictures or, or blueprints. Odds are they did. If the slightly smaller North Carolina can fit one, surely the Iowas can. But uh, no idea where it is. Iowa class battleships were built with radar. Do you think the Navy brass was just being regressive by installing searchlights instead of trusting that radar? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. And for this video, we were funded by Rustic and Main. Rustic and Main makes rings like mine out of reclaimed wood. This one has a gold band in it. It is covered in an epoxy and it is teak from Battleship New Jersey and oak from a whiskey barrel. So my ring, unlike your gold ring, actually tells a story. Rustic and Main has a wide selection of reclaimed woods that you can make rings out of from uh, Teak from Battleship New Jersey or Battleship North Carolina and a number of other sources. Check the link in the description for more information about their products. Uh, there's also a link in the description to Battleship North Carolina's YouTube page and uh, they would absolutely appreciate it if you could support them. Thanks for watching.